Now, three quarters of parents who have autistic children say that people regularly make disapproving noises about their child's behaviour in public. The National Autistic Society also found that half the people with a family member who has the condition often don't leave home with them for fear of how people will react. Well, we'll hear from a leading autism expert in a moment. But first, let's find out how Liverpool's trying to be the UK's first autism-friendly city. As Lindsay Prosser reports, the National Museums of Liverpool is one of the organisations trying to help autism families feel less socially isolated. Hello. Oliver is completely fascinated. What shall I He's enjoying a visit which could otherwise be challenging for him. I like loads of fishes. What kind of fishes? Look at that big one. The session is just for children with autism. They have the aquarium to themselves so they can join in or withdraw as they need to. Well, it's great because I would never, ever in a million years have brought them in here. If it wasn't if it, if it wasn't an autism friendly um, place, because it, it would just be too many people. And would it be stressful for him? Very, very stressful. Very stressful. He would just be too overwhelmed. The workshop is the result of National Museums Liverpool working with a charity to make their venues more accessible to children and adults with autism. Maybe that the lighting just needs to be dimmed a little bit. Maybe. Um, if you've got videos on show, um, that audio-visual information for people, maybe they could be staggered so there's not too much noise conflicting um, within the environment for people. And it, it's just small things, like small adjustments like that. Allowing Joe quiet time means he can take part when he's ready and learn in a way that suits his needs. He's been to the museum before, but he, was, he stayed about two minutes. So the fact that he's able to come, it's, it's doing it on Joe's terms and that's what Joe's never had before. The boys have enjoyed their session and it's hoped that more venues will become autism friendly. Lindsay Prosser, BBC Northwest Tonight, Liverpool. Well, we're joined now by Robin Bush, Chief Executive of Autism Together. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We heard there just a little bit about some of the challenges that families of people with autism and people with autism face when they go out. Mm -hmm. It can be quite difficult for them. Yes, it can be. I mean, I think one of the most significant difficulties is, of course, is that people with autism don't look like there's any different to anybody mm -hmm. else in, in the community. So when you see somebody with autism becoming overwhelmed, um, Having a, having a meltdown, um, people just assume that that individual is either being awkward or disruptive deliberately, and of course that's not the case. Mm. Um, so what we're trying to do is, is create a city that is more autism friendly. Mm. I, I mean, you, you talk about the reaction that they can get, and what effect does that have on people then? How does it affect their lives? Well, the reaction from the general public can have massive impacts on people in terms of how it affects their self-esteem. But moreover than that, what it can do is mean that people withdraw themselves from their communities and become socially isolated. Mm. And there is a statistic that the National Autistic Society produced last year that said 79% of people with autism and with, uh, with autistic members in their family um, felt socially isolated. It's such a shame, isn't it? And, th and I guess there are just, as we saw in that report, there are things that can be done to make it a lot easier for people with autism. What are those? What, what can you suggest to organisations to okay. make life easier? I mean, I think what, what's really important is we're not asking for massive changes here. The mm. first thing that's really important is awareness training. So if, uh, if organisations were to open their minds to becoming more autism friendly um, and provide basic awareness training for their staff, they would understand that if somebody was suffering from some difficulty, what to do about that and how to handle it sensitively. Mm. And there are some smaller adjustments that they can make. The museums in Liverpool have already made huge strides forward in terms of creating sessions for people with autism um, which uh, meet their sensory needs. But if, for example, one of the features of your uh, organisation is you have to queue, um, then if you could encourage people with autism to phone up prior to coming um, and they could just bypass the queue and get fast-tracked in, that would reduce anxiety tenfold. Small adjustments make a huge difference. And obviously Liverpool is making a, a bid here to be the UK's first autism-friendly city, but briefly you want this to be wider. It would be fantastic if we could roll this out across the whole country or even regionally. You know, we've got Manchester here, really big population hub. We've got Preston. We've got Leeds not too far away. Yeah, it'd be brilliant if we could uh, get other cities on right. board with this project. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Well, we're hearing there from Robin.